I um, started telling bedtime stories to my three-year-old daughter, Beatrice, when she entered my life at the age of three. And, you know, it's not a given when a youngster walks into your life, like immediate love doesn't happen. And, you know, family bonds and blended families, they take time to make work. And, and, and you really have to, you know, establish a trusting, caring relationship. And, um, and I want to do that really well with Beatrice, who's the youngest of five children that I've, that I've raised and taken care of in our family. And, um, and so I started telling her bedtime stories about a girl always outfoxing, narrowly escaping the jaws of death, you know, from a crocodile. And every night, this girl would almost get devoured by a crocodile. And every night, she would just manage to escape death at his hungry jaws and his 69 teeth. And uh, Beatrice loved these stories. And of course, the trick to telling any child a good bedtime story is make the the protagonist a little bit like the listener, a little wiser, a little wilder, slightly older, and you really got the listener's interest. And so Beatrice loved these stories so much that she made me promise that one day I'd write a novel and dedicate it to her and feature her, her character, at least of her name in the book. And, um, and I did finally, 15 years later, get around to writing Beatrice and Croc Harry. You know, I guess it's a bit preposterous in entertaining, I hope, that a girl should be dueling with a crocodile. And not only dueling with the crocodile, but having long conversations about everything under the sun with this crocodile. But really, so many people in this world have had to face predators. Whether they've arrived as enslaved peoples and the entire world that they come to seems hostile to them, or whether they're uh, born and raised as indigenous people in this land and have, have had to deal with all sorts of predatory behavior, you know, as they were entering the world and growing up and sent away to residential schools. Um, and, and so Harry, as a 700 pound, ever hungry, absolutely carnivorous crocodile, you know, is a stand in, you know, for the sorts of predators that uh, we as human beings have always had to face and overcome. And Beatrice's job really is to tame this predator and, then, and to build a relationship and then to use that relationship to her advantage, to help, to help her kind of reestablish her last identity. I'm certainly happily obsessed with issues of identity and belonging, and maybe because I wasn't sure about my own when I was growing up in Don Mills, you know, in the 60s. Um, and so I had to kind of work to develop a, a positive sense of identity as a child of a black man and a white woman and a, growing up in a white suburb. Um, it, was, it was work to sort of come to a positive sense of self. So I've, it's been a lifelong interest of mine, the acquisition of identity and how it kicks in, when it kicks in, what it's all about and what it means to us the struggle to figure out who we are and where we belong. And so in this book, I felt that an interesting way to come at that lifelong canvas that I've been working on was to sort of have Beatrice start from zero. I mean, she's not a newborn, she's a child. We don't know her age, but she's not a teenager yet. She's certainly not a toddler. She doesn't know her age either. She discovers that later, but she has no memory. So she has no sense of herself or of her blackness. And of course, why would she think about her blackness? She's alone in a forest. I mean, you know, blackness and racial identity is an artificial construct invented by human beings. So if there are no other human beings around, she has no reason to think about, initially, no reason to think about the fact that she's black because it had no consequence when you're alone in a forest. Um, so having her start at scratch in terms of her identity allowed me to then let the reader follow her as she does begin to develop a sense of who she is and to recapture some fragments of memory and to begin to grow into a positive sense of blackness. And of course, m working with her hair is a way, is a symbol, you know, is a way for her to, to, to grab hold of it and to affirm her own identity lovingly. And so I thought it was a great opportunity to sort of let the process of identity acquisition be dramatized by having this girl start from scratch.